Qatar is one of the places where a lot of um, civil society need to engage um, the, the government, but also you know think tanks, etc. That's the same for places like Saudi Arabia, it's the same for the United Arab Emirates, because quite clearly, unlike Sudan's previous conflicts this time around, the Gulf has a lot of influence on what happens in, in Sudan. And, and ignoring them or not really paying attention um, to what goes on here, I think it would be to our detriment. Sanctions serve many functions. They serve a legal function, um, and they also serve a political function, um, but, they, but they're all, they can mostly be um, symbolic because oftentimes it's very difficult to get to this, the bank accounts um, in particularly other jurisdictions in other countries that may not be willing to give you any kind of control over those um, bank accounts. So what needs to happen is that there needs to be a broader strategy where sanctions fit in so the sanctions are able to be deployed successfully, not just symbolically, but also financially and, and legally, and so they can actually have some kind of impact. Now we haven't seen that so far. The US has sanctioned uh, several individuals as, as well as four companies. Uh, the UK has sanctioned six companies. The EU has said that it was going, is going to sanction some companies in Sudan, but has yet to do so. Um, but quite clearly, we haven't seen the full range of what sanctions can do because they don't fall into any strategy. Now, what you heard in the room is, is the Americans saying that they do have a strategy. Um, I, for one, have not yet seen it. Um, I'm not sure that many people perceive that there is a strategy from the US. Um, so we need to, I think, have a much more concerted effort that put in place that it actually has some joined up thinking, not just within Western capitals, but also regionally here in, in, in the Gulf, um, so that sanctions are able to be much more effective than they currently are.